Roxanne Skokos serves a hearty first course from Phoenix, squid stew containing leeks, tomatoes, and clam broth. It's served with the small rice-shaped pasta, orzo. Then the entree is served by Hans Hickel in Tampa, Florida. It features, among other things, Chilean sea bass served with a colorful Caribbean fruit chutney. Then Thomas Furlish offers his version of strudel in New York. Its outside is unusual, using phyllo dough, but the inside features the traditional farmer's cheese filling. Roxanne Skokos Namesake Restaurant in Phoenix offers the chef's eclectic and often surprising cuisine. Born in Washington State, she trained at La Varenne in Paris and credits that experience as her primary culinary inspiration. Her first course is squid stew, served with multicolored orzo. Um, I'm just heating up my pan at this point, and we'll saute the leeks. A little bit of olive oil. Then I add the garlic. A bit of, a bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to put a lid on it and lower the heat and let those sweat a bit. Squid is cut. I like them in kind of large, rather coarse pieces. They've been cleaned. The cartilage in the center has been taken out and the beaks removed from the tentacles. The squid pieces are drained before cooking. Okay, I'm going to add um, some white wine. And I'll add some chopped oregano. And we'll let this sweat. In another pan, the squid is cooked, beginning with the tentacles. You want to make sure that you drain as much of the liquid off of the squid as you can. I'm going to add some tomatoes. These are just Roma tomatoes that have been skinned and uh, seeded. And I kind of like them in rather large pieces. It's kind of a primitive dish. Um, Glaze the pan with a little bit of this clam broth. The body pieces are sautéed in three batches, deglazing the pan with clam juice after each. OK, 
Okay, then we're just going to put a lid on it and just let it simmer. And uh, we've got our multicolored uh, orzo, could be any type of orzo, could it be any type of pasta for that matter, or maybe some rice. Um, I think this is kind of an interesting thing and makes the dish a little bit more interesting. So this is just salted water, and we'll cook it until it's until it's nice and tender. Drain it, and then we'll toss it with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You can also add a little mazithra cheese, which is a, a sheep's uh, milk, Greek dry cheese, if you'd like. Just enough to give it some shine, a little bit more, another layer of flavor. The stew should simmer for 45 minutes to an hour. I have some pea tendrils for garnish. And they even have a little flowers still left on So that's that. Veteran chef Hans Hickel was born in Vienna, Austria. He apprenticed at the Saka Hotel and Hotel Europa, both in Vienna. Then he worked in England's Channel Islands, London, France, and throughout the Caribbean. At taping time, he was at Oyster Catchers in Tampa. His entree is sea bass and chutney. Well, now, now we're going to do the chilling sea bass with the Caribbean food chutney. It's rather simple. What I'm doing now, I'm what I did earlier, I did uh, segment uh, grapefruit, two oranges, two limes, some mango, and I have some mango and some red papaya. What I'm doing with the membrane, I just cut them into smaller units. And the mangoes. and the papaya. What I'm doing now, I put all these segments in, into a little colander. and extract a little bit of juice. So that it does not dilute my uh, syrup-like mixture. Okay, let me just add the mangoes. It's a real pretty colorful mixture. Just mix the juices with a little bit more lemon juice. Bring up roughly about four ounces of liquid. Now I combine the juice, which was rendered from the, partially from the fruit, four ounces of sugar, and I bring it in, put it in the fire, bring it to boil, and then just turn it down to simmer. Fresh ginger was added and the liquid is reduced to a syrup. 
mean about added. Sorry, wrong thing. Some cardamom seeds. So it's quite syrupy, you know. And what I do now is I add the food. Isn't it pretty? Real colorful. And while this cools down somewhat, we're gonna start working on the fish. Okay. Okay. What we have here, this is a Chilean sea bass. You can any use any sea bass, Thai bass, for the same dish. You can use something with any meat, with any fish item, I mean. The fresh black pepper. A little bit of sea salt. Oh, oh. Still alive. And you take a little bit of soft butter. And you rub it on the outside of the fish. Meanwhile, I'm heating up a non-stick non skillet. It's the best thing to use for this. Get the skillet real hot. And put in the hot skillet. See it on both sides for about a minute, minute and a half. Turn the fish. Depending on the size of the fish, you know, this one is a little bit thicker, it's about an inch, inch and a quarter. You want to put it in another pan and finish it in the oven while you're working on the sauce. At 350 for five to eight minutes. Half a cup of Cabernet Sauvignon. And I'm deglazing the pan. Reduce the wine a little bit. And then we add for a cup, half a cup of veal stock, brown veal stock. Add a touch of pepper. Now we simmer this a little bit down. Vegetable garnish includes fingerling potatoes, which were halved. And we add the pearl onions and the baby leeks. They were all steamed and are just being warmed through in butter. A little bit of fresh pepper. And just a dab, dab of sea salt. Deep fried zucchini chips also garnish. You put a nice bonus chutney. Of course, this sea bass, or chilling bass in that, in that case. And Spoon a little bit of this veal and red wine. We're gonna red wine glaze. Our little fingerling potatoes go. We 
places leaks in no, no particular way. And plus the onions in no particular way as well. A slice of star food and some of the zucchini fritters. The Café des Artistes touts itself as one of the ten most popular restaurants in New York. It obviously leads the city in nymphs. Austrian chef Thomas Ferlisch is the executive chef. Before moving to New York, he worked in Switzerland, Bermuda, and Vienna. He goes to his roots with Milchramstrudel. The strudel filling is started by creaming butter, powdered sugar, and lemon zest, and also egg yolks. Um, when the butter is creamy, okay. we also add uh, the vanilla extract, we lower the speed a little bit. Now we're going to take it out, the bowl. Okay. Now we're going to mix in the Parma cheese. We're going to break it up a little bit. The butter mixture was transferred to this large mixing bowl. We're going to put in the raisins. The soaked bread we have here. The cubed bread was soaked in milk. The sour cream. And now we combine everything. Okay. Now the only thing left to do is to whip the egg whites and fold the egg whites in. Egg whites and sugar are beaten. Okay. We have to line our baking dish with a filo dough. Okay. So what you do is you butter the pan very generously. Okay. You're also going to put butter on your filo dough. Filo dough is a little bit tricky. Uh, filo dough can break very easily. So you, the trick is once you unwrap it and you take it out from the freezer, you have to let it sit out for maybe 20 minutes and then you have to work very fast. And uh, don't be afraid to, to brush butter on because it will help you from breaking. Then we're gonna put two layers of the dough on the bottom and also two on the top. It's ready when it's stiff like that. Okay. We're gonna mix that now in our bread, farmer cheese, sour cream mixture.
Two more layers of phyllo go on top, and the strudel goes into a preheated 325 degree oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, boiling milk is added. It's got a little bit of color already. It's then baked for 40 minutes. The strudel gets moistened by the, by the milk now, and uh, it will, it's forced to form another crust now. After you take it out, don't serve it immediately. It has to sit, it has to settle, uh, at least for half an hour. The strudel is served with creme anglaise.